Welcome back, Challengers. The video you have been waiting for, a breakdown of Reese Witherspoon. And I've realized that people feel very some type of way about Reese. They either love her or they hate her. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I can see a lot of good that she does. I think she's raised her kids right. Like, I love that her daughter, like, drives a hoopty, had a job, like, stays off the gram. Like, is she's raising, like, a normal person. Whereas a lot of people in Hollywood, uh, Lori Laughlin, you're not really raising, um, like, future senators there. Although in this climate, in America, actually, someone who thinks that they're above the law, you actually very much might be raising a future senator. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Reese, because a lot of the things people say about her behind the scenes is that she is that classic, bitchy Southern belle. And if you don't know what that is, Oh, I'll break it down. I guarantee that for most of you, you've encountered some woman like this, whether or not it comes in like a southern, a sweet old southern coat, or just kind of more out in the open. We're going to talk about how to deal with frenemies and the sweet mean girl. Kind of like a good guy fuck boy. You got him on the female end too. But first, just want to remind you guys to click like and subscribe. We're doing five videos a week in quarantine. And if you have a love question or a dating or a friendship question or a question about uh, my southern accent, want to hear me do it more, find me on my website, shallonluster.com. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at shallonxo. And if you want a video shout out for a friend, I, they're so fun to do. I'm sorry I always look like a potato in them. I will look better, I promise. Find me on Cameo at shallonxo. So Reese. I, it's like, I've always had like some type of feeling about her. Okay, no, I know what the feeling was. Stone cold jealousy because she got to marry Ryan Phillippe. Like cruel intentions was like my Bible, my, oh, it, do you ever like go back and watch a movie that you used to love when you were younger? And you're like, I see how this informed my personality. I see it now. Like I am like a third Blanche Devereaux a third Catherine from <laughs> Cruel Intentions and like a third Marky Mark from Shooter. This is, this is, this is my holy triumvirate, right? I am what I am. And it made me insane that she got to not only hook up with Ryan Phillippe in the movie, she got to marry him. He is gorgeous. I've seen him in person. He hosted SNL one time when I was at the party and I was like, oh, stunning. We, he's revealed himself to be, what is he like abusive or something? Oh. That's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. We're here to talk about Reese. Reese, from every single story I've ever heard about her, and I have a friend of a friend who worked for Draper James, said that Reese is that classic, bless your heart, kind of Southern woman. Now, if you are from the South or you have family from the South, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you don't, Bless your heart sounds like a what like a sweet thing to say and sometimes it is. Oh, I know, just bless her heart. She is going through it. But sometimes, very often, it is an absolute declaration of war. Reese is the kind of person to say something like this. Do you know what I love about you is that you just you just wear whatever you like. Like you're not like, oh, I have to follow the trends and I have to like make something flatter. You just go for it. You are brave. I like that. Bless your heart. You're like, hey. Wait, what? Does it was this a compliment or was this like the worst burn of my entire life? I've heard Taylor Swift is like this. Katy Perry said that Taylor Swift was like this. And Reese is definitely like this too, that you're like, <sighs> and it's the kind of behavior that you can't be like, well, fuck you, because then you look crazy because on the outside, ostensibly they were paying you a compliment, but it wasn't, it wasn't even a backhanded compliment. It was just like, what, I, what? And so it's really difficult to identify people like this because they are charming. And some people woof, that would go right over their head to be like, thank you. I do feel brave. I do wear what I like. I like that. Seeing of what I'm wearing. I'm, I'm in like one of 10 trillion caftans because as you guys know, I was on my way to Bali before we got quarantined. So it's like all I packed. And now that it's 90 degrees, I can't just be in my Target hoodies anymore. So I'm like, we're doing it. I'm going to go back outside to my slip and slide. So that was very much, not was, that is very much Reese's vibe. And the friend of a friend who worked for Draper James was like, it is the biggest pack of catty bitches I've ever seen. And I have worked in luxury PR my whole career. Luxury PR is an important distinction. 
if you don't know what PR is, PR is public relations. And you can have, um, you can have a public relations person who represents like another person, like Taylor Swift has a PR person, right? Or you can have a PR person who's what they call in-house. They work specifically for a brand. They work for Fenty. They work for Draper James. And then you can have PR companies and they have many different clients, you know, like a, like a pimp, you know, and they represent this restaurant and that celebrity and that eyeshadow and blah, blah, blah. So luxury PR is as it sounds. It is like the grand, like everyone who works in PR wants to work in, they want to work for Prada. They want to work for La Mer. They want to work for Supreme and whatever, because it's like, you get all the cool stuff. You get to go to all the shows. Like there's a lot of cachet there and it invites literally the worst kind of personalities you can possibly imagine. I worked for a luxury um, publication for a while and we would interface with luxury PR because they would pitch us their companies and their supercars and their helicopters and stuff like that. And every girl I met was worse than the one before. Just like, oh my God. Yeah. She, it was stuff like, you're so, I just love that you just like wear leggings. I mean, like it's fashion week and you're just like in leggings. Like, I don't give a fuck. This is me. <laughs> I love it. We should get a coffee. And I'm like, no, Allie, we are not getting a coffee, you know, but I was old enough to like see through that. But like a lot of other girls, they'd be like, yeah, I, uh, and it would corrode, erode their, own self-esteem, you know? And apparently that's very much the Draper James culture. Draper James is Reese Witherspoon's company. And I'm like, ah, uh, I fucking knew it. I can't believe her company's as successful as it is. I think their designs are like, hmm, they're fine. I don't, I don't know. They're inoffensive, whatever. But Reese has had a bit of a, bit of a, bit of a spell lately. There was a the whole thing with her giving away dresses for teachers. And I read the initial announcement about this and it seemed very obvious to me that this was a giveaway. It wasn't, it was like a, like a contest, like a raffle. It wasn't every teacher in America gets a dress. I'm, I know much more about how like the fashion industry works and stuff. It's like, they, they simply don't produce that many dresses and it's just unreasonable. You can't give every, anybody in any category a thing that's and I was also like teachers. I want not like nurses. I mean, teachers deserve my God. They do. They do the Lord's work. I don't want to fucking deal with kids all day. Mm. But you know, I thought it was weird. And she got this huge backlash. And oh, we can't even afford these with the discounts. Like, well, I know. I'm sorry. Like, there's a lot of brands probably that are out of price range. I do, I just felt like that was like a very unfair backlash against her. You know, maybe she should have made it more clear. Whatever. But interestingly, right after that, what did Reese do? Right after that, what did she do? She went on Jamila Jamil's podcast and talked about her postpartum depression, talked about her lifelong battle with anxiety. I believe her. I mean, I, I don't think she's lying. I do just think the timing is interesting, you know, because what do we say manipulative people want? Pity. It's very useful to get people back on your side. I think it's kind of a hacky move. I think it's like a a cheap card to play, but I'm sure that she helps some women going through postpartum. And you know, you look at Reese's life, you're like, it's so perfect. And now it's like, no, like you can have all the money in the world. You can have all the nannies in the world. Postpartum is not contingent on the logistics. It, it comes from inside, you know? So I'm sure that that was helpful for a lot of people, but that's not what I want to talk about. That's not the only thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about how to deal with women like Reese that, Bless your heart. Because we're used to thinking of mean girls as Regina George. It's like, why are you so obsessed with me? Just so overtly bitchy and callous. And it's like, you know, when you see him. And I was saying, it's like a fuck boy. Like, we tend to think of a fuck boy as like, I always do, I always do the body roll in the two suck. Like Roller from Claws. Like, uh, <laughs> what's his name? Jody High Roller on Riff Raff. You know, just like dudes who look like that are like, hey, baby girl. I'm standing outside this gas station. You want a monster energy drink? Come on, I'll treat you right. That's not how they always are, right? Danger takes many faces. The devil knows many names. We most often get caught up with a good guy fuck boy who does seem nice, does have like his head on his shoulders, like, but he's, and he might be all of those things, but he's a fuck boy to us. He's not giving us what we want. He's fucking with our hearts and our minds. He's leading us on. He's ghosting. So he might be a good person, but he is a fuck boy. So you can have a Regina George, 
but you can also have a Reese Witherspoon. I think Reese is like, I don't think she's like a bad person. You know, she does a lot of good things, but I believe she is like, she's the frenemy type. She's the frenemy type. And it turns out there is a clinical term for this frenemy behavior, relational aggression. Dr. Laura Choate, who I read a lot of her stuff, she's written a lot of stuff on like female friendships and female dynamics and stuff. She kind of broke down what relational aggression is. She said, it's defined as the act of hurting others by manipulating or harming their relationship. Girls learn to use relational aggression for a variety of reasons, but they keep using it primarily because it works so well to get girls what they want, popularity, status, and it continues because girls who are not in the inner circle of popularity are fearful to challenge the relational perp perpetrator, the, the Reese, out of fear that they too will become the next victims. Sounds a lot like a Regina George, right? And it's true. If I've dealt with a Reese before in my old friend group, there was this girl and she was so fucking like that. And one of our other friends, like it was like one of her best friends, but me and this Reese, we just didn't like each other. Like, you know how you have two dogs like walking down the street and you're like, waffles is great. Noodles is great. And they see each other and they're just like, rah, rah, rah. it's just this animal. No. And that was her and I, we just looked at each other and we're like, mm -mm. And I was fine to just be like acquaintances, keep in movement. I don't, I don't care. I don't need to be friends with everyone. I barely have time to see all the friends I do have, you know? But I, it's like, I'm not interested in making enemies. Like, if it don't get me laid and it don't get me paid, I don't need to be doing it. That was not her vibe. She would say all these passive aggressive things about me. Like, I had, I had been dealing with a boy who had cheated on me. And way early on in my relationship with him. Like we weren't even official, we were still talking. I was at a concert and I made out with some boy on like in, in the pit, it was like nothing. I didn't even know his name. And she's like, okay, well, why are you mad James cheated on you when you kissed that boy at the concert? And my friends were like, Kristen. And I was like, you don't know me like that. First of all, you're new to this group. You don't know my history. You don't know anything. I don't even know why you know that about me. And I was like looking at my other friends. I was like, how does she know this? Like I like bit back because I'm like, what it told me is I can't trust you because you're going to, you're going to come around my boyfriend and be like, don't feel bad that you cheated. She totally kissed a guy last July. Like she would be that bitch who did that. And so I'm like, I don't need this. But my tactic a lot of times is to call people out for things, you know, <laughs> to the surprise of no one. I'm a bit of a loud mouth, but because I don't want people to think that I'm the one. I don't want people to think I'm an easy target. I'm not, I'm not. I mean, for some people I am. For some people, big symbols make big targets. But in my interpersonal relationship, it's like, no, you're actually not gonna speak to me that way. No, you're actually not gonna terrorize me and you can put a little smile and a bow on it. I see through the bullshit. So you, you sell that shit someplace else, sweetheart. So the people like Reese, it can be hard to go against them because if you're in a work setting, you're gonna look like the crazy sensitive one. Even if it's not work, work, family. We know people like this in family too, right? Friendships. It's like, it's just this sort of mass gaslighting where if you say to someone else, I fucking hate that bitch Reese, they're going to be like, what do you mean? She's so nice. She said she liked your outfit. I was like, she didn't. <sighs> A lot of times other people aren't going to see it. Maybe subconsciously they do. And it goes back to what Dr. Choate was saying that like, they don't want to stand up to this queen bee and risk getting thrown out of the group because why? our social inclusion needs. As we just talked about in one of our last videos, the Tiger King videos, is sometimes more intense than our need for survival, for emotional survival. Hey, I'll throw, I'll throw her under the bus if it means I get to keep my place in this tribe, right? And that is especially true when you're young. Like when we, you grow up and you're an adult, you learn that like tribes shift and it's not like, I'm sitting with all my best friends at lunch. Otherwise I don't have friends. You're like, no, we're at our individual places of employment. It's completely fine. <laughs> you know, you learn to like be on your own a little bit more and get that self-esteem from within a little bit more. But when you're young, like, no, like, what are you going to do? Bite the queen bee, bite the hand that feeds you, feeds your popularity, gets you invited to things, gets the hot boys to come and talk to you. Maybe not, but there are some things you can do to combat this. First of all, Acknowledge that this is not how friendships go. This is not just a normal part of the relationship. The relational aggression is not, it's just because it's common doesn't mean that it's okay. A lot of shitty things are common. Vaping is common. It is not okay, girls. What does it do to your body? We don't know. We don't know. 
I don't want to know. Another thing to do is evaluate. Look at your relationship with this person and think, is this the type of person I actually want in my life? And you'd be surprised how rarely we as women pause to ask ourselves that. We have been conditioned by, by society to have a beggar's mentality. Oh, someone wants to be my friend? Okay, yeah, oh, even if eight months ago they revealed themselves to be basically my enemy, they called me a slut, they flirted with my boyfriend. No, 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 I can't, I can't give them up. Oh, a guy likes me? Oh, I'm not attracted to him at all, but he likes me, so I should go out with him. We are taught to have this, oh, yes, okay, whatever you want mentality. And we are not taught to stand back and be like, no, no. Well, bitch, I'm teaching you that now, aren't I? That's what we do here on this channel. We go against the grain. We do things not in the way that just society tells us, oh, I should keep going. Nope. We do things that are healthy for us. And evaluation is always healthy. Whether you're evaluating your diet, your wardrobe, do you need all these caftans? Yes, I do, I need them all. Your friendships, your everything. It has to be the constant gathering of those data points, right? So step back and be like, is this someone, knowing what I know, observing what I've observed, would I choose to have them in my life? And if the answer is no, why are they still there? Now, sometimes it's because you can't get rid of them. They work in your office. They legitimately are in your friend group and you don't want to have World War III where it's like, it's her or it's me. That's, that's going to bring you more unhappiness. <sighs> it's going to bring you unhappiness. But I know because I tried that. I know because I tried that with that chick I was talking about with my own personal Reese and it became the War of the Roses. I mean, her cider. And I, I had specifically said, I was like, Katie, I, I respect that you're friends with Kristen, but like, I don't like her. I view the things she said to me, I view them as attacks and it's my right to feel that way, you know? And she's like, oh, she just, she doesn't mean it. I'm like, you know what? I don't care. And that's fine. I'm not saying that I don't care, but like, I'm not here to try to fix her. I don't care enough about this relationship to try to mend it. I just, I just don't care. So if it's going to be a group outing where there's like more than four of us, all right, I'll go. If it's going to be like the three of us, no, I don't really, I just don't want to spend that time around her. I'm not going to discourage you guys from doing, go and do your thing. But sometimes maybe if I'm in a vulnerable place, if I've just had a breakup, if I've had a bad day and I know she's going to be someplace, it's just an emotional hardship for me to be there. And I, I will just politely opt out. I'll just politely opt out. You know, it's, and I don't want this to be a her versus me situation. Well, it fucking turned into that. We were like 23. So it's like a lot of people were looking for drama. And it was just exhausting. But I can look back on that situation and feel proud of myself. I can feel, because I stood up for myself. Because the thing that people like the Reese's and the Regina's do to us, they make us feel like cowards. Oh, she was mean to me and I just sat there. Because I'm supposed to be polite. Who the fuck says you need to be polite? I mean, be polite to like older people, police officers, your cashier at Target, of course. I don't feel compelled to be polite to people who are not polite to me, who come to my emotional house and bang on the door. Someone's going to fucking answer you, right? Don't do it. I mean, of course, you pick your battles. You can't go around being this like war machine. But I felt proud of myself that I was like, it's not acceptable that you speak to me that way. That was logged into evidence. And I think that that planted a seed in the minds of my other friends. And some of them sided with her. Shallon is being so sensitive. Okay, so I'm being sensitive. Color me sensitive. I'm sensitive Shallon. TM, brand new hashtag. I, am, I have a right to be sensitive. And, but then, like I said, I removed myself from the situation with a minimum of drama, at least on my end. How it played out with other people, okay. But like I said, I look back on that with like, I stood up for myself and that gave me practice standing up for myself. Events like that created this channel where I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it was icky. That was a very uncomfortable brunch after I said that. But then I was able to see the writing on the wall. My friends who were like, Shallon was being crazy. Oh, well, then you can go with Reese as well. You can go with Reese. Uh, that's fine. 
you're clearly not here for me. You're not, you don't respect my boundaries. I would respect yours if you're like, hey, I don't want to be around this person. I'd be like, okay, I might not get it and I might feel differently, but do what, sure, okay. Why, why would I care? So I needed to see that. I needed to see the writing on the wall because then that made me do the next point, diversify. It made me diversify. And we'll talk about how this relates to a work setting too, because a lot of these people are at work and it's like, well, I'm, am I just going to divide the office like Moses parting the Red Sea? No, you are going to have to find a way to deal with these people. If they're your inferior, you call them out, out on their shit. Absolutely. Absolutely. If they're your equal, if they're your inferior, it's like, sorry, what did you mean, Reese, when you said that if this had been done on time, when it was done on time, would you like to explain that? Well, no, I just, no, I, you said what you said. I believe you choose your words carefully or do you not choose your words carefully? Do you choose your words carefully? Okay, so then I would, I would appreciate if you could argue your point. I've done that at work too. And people get real flustered. And again, it was an awkward rest of the meeting. It was an awkward rest of the day. But I felt proud of myself. And you know what? Those attacks, they lessened. Because she was looking for an easy, an easy target, right? They, she wanted to feel good. And I was like, I'm not the one. I'm not the one, sweetheart. You go to someone else. I'm going to set the precedent for how I am going to be treated here. And hopefully that inspires other women to stand up too, right? Because when we all do it together, we tampen down that behavior in the Reese's of the world and the Regina's of the world. But like I said, diversification is key. Had I not gone through that with that group of friends I had when I was 23, I never would have broken into like the NYC music scene, right? Like, and that's where like my heart was calling me, like the Lower East Side and like these cool clubs and like all these up and coming bands, like My Chem, Fall Out Boy, all this stuff, like Taking Back Sunday, the Academy is, ah! And I, it's like, it forced me, it, it forced me to read the writing on the wall that's like, this group isn't making me happy all the time. Maybe it's individuals and in our individual relationship, they are, but like, it's time to diversify a little bit. So get out there and try to make some new friends, right? And if you're still in school and it's like, I can't, I can't make a whole new group of friends. The clicks are set. This is what it is. Okay. Then you throw yourself into causes, clubs, sports, right? Run for student council president, start the sober driving club and you go around and pick people up, you know, join Latin club. There are ways to get involved. Fuck. I wish I was still in school. Like there's so many ways to be socially involved. Whereas when you get out into the, re the real world, you're in a real world. You know what I mean? When you get post-college life, it's like, you got to try a lot harder to make friends and it's not impossible. But I've always said the number one question I get from you guys is how to make friends as an adult. It's tricky and it takes more intention and that's not something we're used to and it feels even harder when we're coming from a place of feeling wounded like oh i've just left this group but reframe it you're not wounded you are flying so you are powerful you are armed you're like i've stood up for myself i am now a leader in my own life i am now a warm-blooded animal and if this is happening at work try to make friends with people from other divisions not necessarily allies but maybe, maybe if they can be like, oh yeah, like I've noticed her being weird. I promise you, whatever pathology you're noticing with the Reese's, other people have noticed it too, and they're afraid to stand up. And when you say, not today, not today, Satan, you establish yourself as a leader. And now there's two people to follow. There's the Reese, but then there's the Shallon. And the same people are going to be like, I'm going to be on Team Shallon. I did that at my old job and I, I truly think it, you know, contributed to me leaving. But like, I was willing to stand up and be like, this is not right. What we're doing is not right. What we're writing about is not right. And that big symbols make big targets. And that's all right. I've always been willing to put myself in the line of fire to like help give other people a voice. It injustice makes me insane it makes me i'm an aquarius i'm very concerned with with justice <laughs> you guys know and so that was always like i'm i'm willing to be not liked if it means i'm helping the people who actually i need to help i don't want to be popular to the masses i could give a fuck right i am here to help the other mighty women and that's got downsides and it might have downsides for you but you know what it's gonna have authenticity it's gonna have pride all right some people don't like me i like me I can look myself in the eye and be like, today I fought the good fight. Today I stood up for myself. 
Doesn't mean you're going to win every battle. Doesn't mean you're going to win any of them. But you are going to win the battle of not resenting yourself. Because eventually that Reese is going to leave. You're going to have new friends. You're going to have a new job, whatever. But that lingering shame of, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. That's going to get into your soul. Now look, I'm not saying you got to go in there like this whirling berserker and, and just like fight this. But no, no. But if there are situations where you're like, this is not okay with me, write it down. Mind map what this person might potentially say or do to you and pre-decide your reaction. Okay, all the way from the minor, she bless your heart over your outfit, to the major, she calls me fat. She tries to hook up with my boyfriend. Boop, 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 boop. I'm going to mind map this shit out. So then when it happens, I open the notes app. I'm like, oh, uh, Reese, you can go fuck yourself. Thank you very much. Hi. Or it can be like, I'm doing nothing. I'm doing nothing. Just moving on. Just keep me moving. Doesn't matter that much. And this is especially important at work. It's like, all right, maybe you can take her being snarky in a meeting. But if she's trying to take credit for your things, nope. The reaction is you call her out in a meeting. You write a letter to management. You stand up for yourself. I'm not the one. Right? Because we do have to pick our battles. We do have to pick our battles. Peace versus victory. And you want inner peace. And you want, you like I said, you want to be able to look yourself in the eye and be like, I did right by myself. And sometimes the path there is different. Sometimes it's standing up for yourself. And sometimes it's like, no, today I'm protecting my peace. I want to have a good brunch. I don't care that she said my outfit's stupid. I don't care about her opinion. I don't care. I'm protecting my peace. And to me, that is victory. I want to know your thoughts on Reese. Does she, is she a bless your heart? Like she is cute, you know, but she, she's a, she's a bit of a bless your hearter. And, you know, they're all over. I'm used to dealing with them. My family's Southern. So I've been told bless your heart more than once by my grandmother. They were not good days. <laughs> anyway, click like and subscribe for new videos probably every other day. Five new videos a week. And like I said, follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO. And if you have a love question, want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, find me on my website, ShallonLesser.com and click get help. Bye y'all.